OMC 161 Graphic and Web Design. This lecture is covering CSS. So here is your introduction to um, the elements of CSS. So originally the intent for HTML was that the author was to use it to specify document content and structure. And then the browser at the client end was to display that content and the structure using preset standardized values. So formatting um, would be based on a environmental landscape such as the desktop screen or a laptop screen or whatever. Um, in reality, authors wanted a lot of control over layout and presentation, um, particularly colors, fonts, um, alignment, and spacing. Um, and so a lot of ad hoc tags and attributes were added by browser vendors that they supported. Some browser vendors supported tags and attributes that were not supported by others. And so um, you had browser-specific situations where if you were using the wrong browser, a page wouldn't look right. Um, and then, of course, mobile devices messed it up even further. And HTML sort of degenerated into a markup language for formatting which was against, wasn't really its design purpose. Its design purpose was to specify content and structure. Um, content and structure, and then the formatting was sort of a byproduct. Um, so some of the problems that this generated were um, performance issues with browsers because the HTML files were getting super, supreme, extremely large. Um, it was difficult to make changes because, the, again, the files were extremely large and long and, and complicated and very inflexible. You couldn't really take them from browser to browser and there was no consistency. Um, there wasn't any support or very little support for mobile devices. Um, and then, of course, the question of accessibility to users with disabilities was um, not, not really present. Um, it, it was it was it was very problematic. So, introducing cascading style sheets, which separated the presentation from the structure. So, taking the content and separating it and putting it in the HTML, taking the presentation aspect of a layout and putting it into the style sheet. So, this eliminated a lot of extraneous formatting tags. Um, that they that used to exist in the HTML. It also imposed a level of consistency that could be um, spread over the entire website. <coughs> it simplified depth maintenance because you didn't have to maintain uh, every single page on your site if you wanted to make some subtle changes to colors or, or spacing or something like that. And then, of course, it shrunk the size of HTML files, which made for a much faster downloading. So why do we call it cascading? Well, because there are three levels. There is the inline level, which is a style tag embedded in the HTML code. This level is not really recommended. Um, for the most part, it's only used in extreme circumstances um, where there is no other option. Um, but that is basically a style attribute tag that's right in the, the, well, in this example, it's in a paragraph tag. There's a style attribute that has CSS properties and values embedded right in the HTML code. Then the next level is document level, and that's CSS defined in the head of the document, and also using a style element in this case, also indicating um, pro uh, properties and values for the layout and the presentation for an HTML page. Document level is also probably a lesser preferred method. Obviously, the most preferred method would be to use a the third level of styles, which is an external style sheet. An external style sheet is the CSS stored in a completely separate file and just linked to the HTML using a link element in the head. So here's an example of a link element. Um, and if you remember back to the HTML page, a link element is a void or an empty element that just could just contains attributes, and those attributes describe what the element is for, what it does. Um, in this case, the REL describes the relationship of the file being linked. It's a style sheet. The href 
tells the browser where that file is located. And the type just tells the MIME type or tells the document type. So it's a text document and it's more specifically a CSS document. For this class, we will use external style sheets. So in a style sheet, we have three types of selectors available. First type, first type of selector is an ID, and if you go back and remember from the HTML lecture, an ID attribute identifies one unique element within the HTML document. The ID selector is the CSS uh, equivalent or correspondent to that ID HTML element. Um, it always starts with a hashtag. So if your HTML element ID is header, in the CSS it's, a, it's reflected as a hashtag header. In the HTML, if your ID value is wrapper, in the CSS you reference that wrapper with a hashtag to identify it as an ID selector. Now, class selectors, if you also remember from the HTML lecture, classes are similar to IDs, but they can be used multiple times and they can apply to multiple elements within one HTML document. Class selectors always start with a period. Now you use um, a class of caption in a couple elements on your HTML page, you would reference that in the CSS using period caption, and so on and so forth. Um, the final selector is an element selector, and that applies to specific HTML element names, such as h1, h2, h3, paragraphs, ULs, body, image, anchor. It selects all of those elements existing in the HTML document. So if I uh, call up and select a paragraph in my CSS, whatever I tell that paragraph to do is going to apply to all paragraphs in the HTML document. So selectors are how you identify HTML elements that you want to modify. So here is the syntax for a CSS rule. Note it's divided now into different um, areas. We have the first being the selector in green. The selector is the, in this case, the H1, and the selector identifies what HTML element this rule is going to be applied to. Um, then we have a little bracket to identify the declarations to separate them from the selectors. So then we have the first declaration, which is composed of two parts, a property and a value. In this case, the property is color, and the value is the hexadecimal code for white. Um, and that deals with font. So when you're talking about color in a property in a CSS rule, that's font color. Um, then the next declaration has an attribute of font size and the value of 12 pixels. So now we're setting the H1 font size to 12 pixels. We've set the H1 color to white. And then the third declaration is for margin. We're setting a value of 2 pixels on the H1 margin. So the whole thing together, selector and declarations all included within the brackets, creates a CSS rule. And so don't get confused between the differences between rules, declarations, and properties. Um, selectors are also important to, to understand what a selector is. So let's talk a little bit about properties. There are way too many to list, um, but some of the more common ones you'll see deal with borders, colors, images, um, that would be border, background color, background images, or in background image, or just background. Um, text, there's some that deal with text, such as font size, font family. Font weight deals with bold or regular. Um, <coughs> <coughs> and then, of course, color. There are a bunch that deal with layout and positioning. Um, you have height, height, width, margins, paddings, um, position, floating, clearing, float clear. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what the, the margin, the difference between margin and padding, because that's a lot, of, a lot of times that's what confuses people. Um, and so there's something called the CSS box model. It's sort of the corner, it is the cornerstone of the CSS visual formatting system. Um, there's a W3Schools link reference and the Robbins chapter four, that's a textbook reference. Um, but basically what it, what it deals with is the CSS box model takes a piece of content, adds on the outside of that content, adds a layer of padding, adds a border, and adds a margin in that order. 
So the closest thing to the content is the padding, next is the border, next is the margin. And you see this in the diagram on the right. We have content, padding, border, and margin. And then we have padding right, padding left. You know, you have top padding, bottom padding, and you have padding that goes all the way around. So one of the things that it's important to remember about padding, border, and margin is that whenever you have a piece of content with a specific width, that the width of your padding, border, and margin is also calculated into the width of that content element. So for instance, in the example at the bottom of the page, we have a content element that's 200 pixels wide, plus a 10 pixel border left, or a 10 pixel of padding left and right, plus a one pixel border left and right, plus 20 pixels of margin left and right, which when you add that up, all adds up to a total of 262 pixels. So really that element is 262 pixels, not 200. So that's where the, where the, um, there's a little bit of, you know, math comes in with, when dealing with the box model. Now it's very important to remember the order of these um, and some of the particular uses for uh, the different um, properties here. So padding is first outside of content, and padding is essentially space between the content and its border. Then of course border. Border is a little easier to understand. Border is a colored border, and you can define a width of it, you can define a style type, you can define a color, um, you can make it dotted or dashed or green or solid, you know, whatever. Um, but you can you have control over that, and then you can also define width. Um, so that's outside of padding. So padding makes the space between content and border. And then outside of border is the margin. And margin is basically space between it and another element on the page. So if you want to put some space between columns, you might say margin right, margin left, and add some space into that. I don't know why this is top margin, oh, left margin, right margin, okay. So anyway, that is, that's how the, the CSS box model works. And that is your basic introduction to the cascading style sheets. We'll see you in class.